Pantheon still feels very strong, but Bandle City is just straight busted. I swear to God, like it's it's so crazy to me. Like I, I it's it's bizarre that we've seen like so much in the last like I I th there's been like so many Reddit posts and Twitter posts and and Twitch comments that I've seen in the last like two weeks saying like Bandle City is fine and content creators are just exaggerating. At last, a way forward. Which is like. I don't know, I get being a contrarian. Like, I'm a fucking contrarian. I love having bad takes. You guys know how much I love having bad takes, but like, goddamn, that's a bad take. Ah, uh, <clears throat> Mogwai's tweet got put on Reddit and half the comments were people just mad at him for complaining. Okay, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, let's talk about it now. I'll talk a little bit about Bandal City. I, I said I would talk about this a while ago. I think a lot of people are misrepresenting the issue. Or the issues, because it's not like there's one, and it's not like it's simple. Issues are never as simple as people make them out to be. <clears throat> All right, here's yeah, here's here's one random post. This is the one that um, is basically the picture of Magui talking about Bandle City. I honestly don't even know his exact arguments. Maybe they're different from mine, but. All I know is that I've seen some of the uh, some of the things that people say in these kinds of comments, uh, and they're kind of missing the point. So let's see what this says. A bit tired of Battle City. Battle Tree is a dumb deck due to have poorly designed landmark removals in the game. Yordles and Arms is busted, and the amount of toolbox cards you have to pick up the exact perfect answers in all sorts of scenarios. Conkology just needs a nerf. Looping telescope needs to not exist. On top of that, they now have access to a fast speed stun, and friendship is really good. Something, something, something. <clears throat> they, didn't, they said they wanted, didn't want to design Galio as Landmark Champion because Landmark Champion is a downright mess. Can we just delete Battle Tree? Um, I, yeah, I don't think this is really like touching on the core issue. This is, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really say this. It, it, it's like a couple of the specific cards are like Yordles and Arms is definitely just unfair uh, for sure. That's something that we all agree with. Um, let's b before I before I actually like talk about that. Let, let's look at some of the comments on what people are saying, right? Not enough proper landmark removal. If you're a Noxus or Ion, it's doomed. So I've talked about this a lot in the past, but landmarks are kind of like a fundamentally flawed concept in this game. It turns a lot of things into go fish. You either have removal or you don't like even if they add more proper landmark removal into the game, it's I, I, I don't know how much I would like that. <clears throat> I personally am pretty okay with Banal Tree. Banal Tree is really, really awkward. Uh, it basically puts the game on an effective clock, and it's it's going to be a hard counter against certain matchups because of that. The problem with Banal Tree is that it's fundamentally incredibly difficult to balance. Like, like I like the idea of what Banal Tree is doing as a concept, but it feels a little off. And like, I mean, even if they make Bandle Tree like six or seven mana, I don't know how much it would nerf it, right? I think they probably should make it six mana and they probably will. Bandle Tree is actually one of the things I'm a bit more okay with. Um, it's like, it forces an interesting build. I don't think it's going to be very oppressive on ladder or anything like that. It is very much a like divergent deck playstyle that you have to build in a very, very specific way. It's more of a tournament deck than a ladder deck. Um, and I don't think Bandle Tree is gonna be. Yes, yeah, Mike Wizard in chat saying Bandle Tree keeps getting better over time. I, I'm I'm confident that's not true. Like Tree is a card that at this point in time has gotten as good as it's going to get. They're not releasing more cards for it, right? Why are people complaining about Tree? I haven't seen it in literally a single game this season. I you literally don't see it on ladder. I think like people complain about Tree are like. I don't know like Bandle Tree was kind of popular when it first came out but it is it is really not much of a ladder deck and I, I don't think we're going to be seeing more of it just because Nar is in the game I mean Nar is good in like every deck right like Tree needs to be changed to I've seen oh that would completely kill it and ruin the point of the deck I don't know I mean I guess this might be like kind of a hot take I don't even know where people are on Bandle Tree but like I think Bandle Tree is one of the more all right concepts in Bandle like as far as like the problems with Bandle, I think this card is pretty low on the list. Like at the end of the day, it's true that you could say that not every deck has a way to remove this landmark, but I don't think that's really a problem because the entire point of this deck is that it's a controlly deck 
well, or it, it, it's a hybridized deck that's doing a few things and if the opponent can't the, this deck is built with the premise of making sure that if the opponent can't put enough pressure on you by a certain turn you will lose the game that's the idea it's effectively a controlly deck I would say if there was a problem with this deck, which is debatable by the way, but if there was a problem with this deck, it would be in the fact that they have good cards as an alt win con, right? Like the fact that simultaneously alongside the Bandle Tree stall game plan with Trump Lockers and with Flock, they're also putting out so much pressure with cards like Gnar, of course, being new, but even with like the swarmy cards, right? Like, yeah, you, you could argue like the loping telescopes and the, you know, the, the, the kind of poppy game plan. Although poppy game plan hasn't really been that good for this deck since poppy got nerfed, right? Just like if there was a problem with this deck, I would say it's definitely not on the side of like the control combo game plan. It's just because it's too good of a deck in addition to having that game plan, right? Like it literally auto wins against certain decks. That's not okay. But what decks? I don't, I don't, there, there's, there, there's no decks this auto wins against. Like, except in, unless you're talking about like Karma Freljord, which I mean, the, the the thing is there, there's always going to be a lot of decks in so <clears throat> you you're, you're saying that bandle tree auto wins against a lot of decks and that's not okay it auto wins against decks that can't apply pressure so the problem with that timmy ccg is that i honestly don't think that's a problem with bandle tree that's like i personally i think that's a problem with those decks the this game R legends of runeterra is not designed as a game to enable decks that don't apply pressure like this you're, you're right in that bandle tree auto wins against like anivia like that's true but that's not because bandle tree is unfair and it auto wins against the subclass of decks that can't apply pressure it's because the game is designed such that decks like anivia will auto lose to a lot of things in any given metagame anivia is a deck that auto loses to it's auto lost to a bunch of decks in a bunch of metagames Karma Freljord is an archetype that can't exist because in every metagame, even before Bandle Tree existed, it will auto lose to any deck that can't apply pressure. Like you in Runeterra, it, you just can't exist if you don't apply pressure. And like adding more ways of removing landmarks, I don't think solves that like at all. I, I think Bandle Tree is one of the few things in Bandle City that I'm like basically 100% fine with. I mean, don't get me wrong. They might have to make this card like six mana and I wish that that deck hadn't gotten Gnar because like you know I can't say for sure because they added Gnar and Gnar is very good maybe Gnar will make the deck better than I think you know but like Bandle Tree is is actually like perfectly fine I know like Mogwai and Grappler were complaining about it earlier I I honestly don't know if Grappler's position on it has changed because I know Grappler likes just playing Karma Freljord and decks that don't have actual win conditions but that's just how Runeterra works as a game right like you, you're not the thing is you don't need landmark removal against Bandal tree and you kind of like never have the problem with landmark removal as a concept is that landmark removal almost doesn't need to exist right like the thing about landmark removal and like people are always saying there needs to be more landmark removal and i i wouldn't mind more landmark removal don't get me wrong but landmarks of any kind don't need removal right the whole point of landmarks is there a zero tempo play which puts the game into a state of okay i'm going to make a bet that if this game goes on x number of turns i will have enough value to maybe gain an advantage out of my landmark that i've played so you as the opponent to that player just make them lose that bet by making x a lower number right like accelerate your game plan against the landmark deck and that's how you beat landmarks you, the landmark dies when you kill a nexus guys when the nexus is dead the landmark goes with it that's landmark removal i know that sounds like a stupid thing to say but when you when you are spending your game plan playing like a really low tempo play i.e the landmark then you are opening yourself up to pressure strategies all right let's see my biggest issue is with battle tree even if you destroy it they just summon another one without losing their place yeah exactly and there's, there's not really a way around that like this comment says changing it to I've seen you summon units from X different regions would make it feel a lot more fair in that way. Yeah, and this person is saying basically, well, it's true that it would be completely unplayable if it needs to be an I've seen. 
you could make it less than 10. I think that's really lame. Like, I mean, the, the, the whole point of the deck is like, you need all the regions. It would, it would, it, it's an unbalanceable concept. If it's an I've seen, right? There's literally no way to make it an I've seen. <clears throat> you can make it cheaper. Yeah, it would be a full redesign of the card at that point. I think the healthiest way to use landmarks are landmarks with countdown effects. 100%, I agree. Iru Tenator Nuji. Why is everyone just talking about landmarks? Wait a second. <laughs> what the heck? Here we go. Forget power. The thematic is extremely boring. Hmm. Okay. Here, let, let's read this. This this looks this looks like a well thought out post. The main issue is the the ideal differs from the execution. The idea that a region is the jack of all trades isn't a bad idea on paper. The main issue is if they do things other region can for the same or lesser cost, then people are more inclined to use the said region because you have more of a multifaceted approach. Hang on, hang on. This guy's onto it. And if they're more expensive, then they see no play. I can play Yasuo Noxus Stun deck, but then Battle City of Stuns. They have other stuff Noxus can do, so that makes Battle City better by comparison because that has reach. The, the, this is pretty much the main problem of bandal city uh, this guy then goes on to say i don't think conchala just needs a nerf as the card pool gets bigger and bigger the rng is more against players as it creates more and more situational cards i think that's a card that will eventually nerf itself okay this guy this guy had me up until here uh yordles and arms is a powerful game winning spell but it encourages the idea of having small tiny creatures massing over the opponent issue is that small tiny creatures are solid on their own yeah, that's kind of true yeah i mean for the most part the, the the first half of this post like basically touches on the issue um you can the, the the second half is uh a little a little sus i mean don't get me wrong conchologist is i'm fine with conchologist existing as a card but they could make it like a 2-1 or or whatever and it would still be very good right Bandle City, I, I, i've i've said uh, at one point in time is kind of like a fundamentally oppressive region right like what what is what does the word oppressive mean, right? Oppressive is a concept that just means like it limits what you're able to play on ladder. So for example, the meme of Azir Aurelia back in the day was a deck that was fundamentally oppressive because it was a deck that was hard to play. It had a pretty good win rate on ladder, but mostly the deck was unhealthy because it limited what you're able to play against on ladder, right? Like you can only play a certain kind of deck that's able to do well into Azir Aurelia. That is at the time something that oppresses what you're able to do it feels like it has a restriction on your ability to play a diverse range of strategies as a player that's what oppressive means vandal city is another kind of oppressive vandal city doesn't it's not oppressive because you have to counter it in a specific way it's oppressive in the deck builder because there's a lot of strategies that you can't run because when you're building the deck and refining it you realize that vandal city would just be better than x right like that's what when i say bandle city is oppressive that's what i mean bandle city doesn't defeat other concepts it cannibalizes them right like that's where it creates kind of like a stranglehold on the versatility of like what you're able to play and so like it's also very strong don't get me wrong but it being very strong isn't even the biggest issue it's probably like the second biggest issue right like it's it's not the main problem like they could nerf some of the best bandle city cards and it would definitely help the main issue but it might not necessarily solve it depending on how they do it right and that's kind of a bit of an issue i i honestly don't even know in the current situation how they could reasonably nerf bandle city to bring it into line because it's a lot of different cards it's kind of like the entire identity of the region right like they could nerf some of the top cards but it just does everything so like when you think about it like this um there, there, there's always going to be kind of like uh okay let, let, let's imagine a bell curve right let's imagine a bell curve again we, we, we have to be thinking about like long-term implications of this line right so for those of you guys who don't know uh this is this is a bell curve also known as a gaussian distribution this is like in statistics this is like uh okay so th this axis represents you know like the, the the total population of of things and this axis represents how common how many of those things are there right so th this is like the average right right here okay so this is going to be our average and a bell curve means that there's you know as you get to the average most things are average and they're in the middle 
and then if you have like some things up here they're pretty uncommon which is why they're lower on the vertical axis uh and then, so we, we we can imagine a bell curve being applied to a, a a lot of different things for example let's say the power level of varying cards in legends of Runeterra, right um so there, there's certain cards that are very very strong and there's a select few uh like nar and whatever and you know all, all you guys know what a good card is uh and there's certain cards that are very very weak you know like the like the memes like ritual of renewal who, who the f knows right but most cards are like average most cards are in the middle right and the idea of a bell curve is a good way to generalize any sort of like population because most things are average and some things are very strong and some things are very weak it's like you're just looking at a population you're examining a linear trait across the population and you see that there's some things that are very high on that trait and some things that are very low on that trait right and the idea is the problem with bandle city is that even if it's made a little bit weaker it will pretty much do a pretty good job of suffocating in its current form of course of, of suffocating whatever the weakest regions are in the game right like if bandle city is a region that can do everything like let's say bandle city is here uh in, in terms of power let's say like the power is over here and so these are high power decks on the right side right so like let's say if bandle city is currently over here and you know let if we're generalizing regions um which it's a generalization there's always going to be exceptions but let's say like Bandle City is here and let's say uh you know uh PNZ is here and like Shurim is here and Felior is here whatever it doesn't matter but the problem isn't like how it cuts off the top end the problem is kind of how it cuts off the bottom end right like even if Bandle City is kind of like averagey because it's good at doing a lot of different things it will still make a lot of weaker strategies and lower tier archetypes hard to play right because they lose their identity because bandle city has kind of taken it right that's the idea of color pie you you need to know you, you need to have a unique identity your deck needs to be doing something special otherwise it's not doing it at all right so the problem with bandle city is like when when you're trying to build a lot of new and experimental concepts a lot of like low tier decks even exper like not even the low tier decks but including those you end up in situations where you're like i i should just go bandle city right because they're good at doing a lot of different things so the, the the problem is that like and i've seen these reddit posts there's 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 a reddit post um there there, there was one about uh i don't know if i can find it but there was one like two weeks ago that people were talking about like oh you know bandle city is fine uh you know t talking about like the win rate of bandle city and i saw a bunch of like comments in chat of people saying like so why do you think Bandle City is an issue when if you look at like Mobilitics, Demacia has a higher win rate, right? Which is just, again, it's just so missing the point. Like design is very, very complicated and there's dissecting an issue is very hard. So anyone who's just gonna like look on Mobilitics and look at like the win rate in the last week and just like look at that one metric and ignore everything else. Like, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm not even surprised Demacia had a higher win rate than Bandle City for that week. That's, but it's, it's just missing the issue right like it's it's not about like the win rate that the best deck has it's about the amount of decks and amount of concepts that you have access to in a region and the stranglehold that that's applying on the metagame right and at the end of the day this is again every issue is too complex to be summed up with like a single like twitter post or or whatever and that's not that's not a jab at mogwai like i mean i i don't think i, I don't think it's it's possible to make a good criticism of a complex issue with like uh a twitter post so like i i think it's unfair that you know people like call him out on stuff like that like the rant on the patch because there's no good way to articulate yourself with that short of uh you know a format right it's it, it literally can't be done right you, you, I've, I've talked about it for like 30 minutes and there's a lot more i can say like this this is the short version this, this is the short version i'm giving you guys right but yeah no th that, that's kind of like the core of the issue and there's a lot of sub issues in panel city don't get me wrong but like the core of the issue is just that they just are too good at doing a wide variety of things and i think a lot of people understand that but not a lot of people understand the implications of that on the larger game on diversity and on deck building thank you for coming to my ted talk i don't know i think it's important as a community that we understand these issues
because I think a lot of people like almost understand that, but like didn't like I, so some of you guys are saying like, that's how I've been feeling, but I couldn't articulate it. And like, yeah, I think a lot of people almost understood that, like they're feeling the same way, but they didn't really understand why, right? We have a Bandel City TED Talk every expansion. Yeah, basically. <sighs> and we have to do it every time. And I don't know. I mean, like I said, Bandle Tree is... If we're talking about like the specific cards and the specific archetypes, which I don't I don't even think is the most important thing to focus on. But yeah, I think panel tree tree itself as a card is basically fine. If you want to slow down the archetype, nerf some of the components. Um, still don't really like mini morph. Uh, my problem with this card was always like in terms of future implication. I just think it's just an unnecessary card like like I, I was I was talking with cephalopod. This is like the most common sentiment. Um, by players that still play in tournaments and I don't play in tournaments anymore. Thank God But you know the, the sentiment is man. I really hope they had Nerfed Lee Sin so I wouldn't have to run mini morph in all my decks It's it's so weird that the devs are nerfing Lee Sin by just forcing players to run Bandle. Just just nerf Lee Sin. Just Just don't just why like Why is that the logic? I don't get it. So how would you solve this problem? So that's that's kind of the problem, right? Like at the end of the day, it's not an easy to solve problem because it's not like a single card, right? I would say the best thing to do is to just like at least reduce the value of the cards that are universally great in these decks. I don't know. There's no easy solution to this problem, right? Like if, if you've understood everything I've outlined, then you understand that it's a it's a very complex issue that is pretty deep reaching and kind of like exhibited in a lot of the cards in the region. It's not like they can nerf all of them, right? I mean, if, if they hit it with like a battery of nerfs, like if they made wall up like four mana and they made, you know, if, if they made Conchala just like one health and they made Pokey Stick unable to target Nexus or, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of like things they can do, but it's, I don't know how much that would help. It's just kind of dumb. Like, okay, here's an example. Like, so I'm I'm building this Riven deck, right? Like, if you if you guys want an example of how like Battle City takes over deck building, I built this like Riven Fizz combo deck. It was actually it's it's a really 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 sick deck, right? I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's Papercraft Dragon. It's new shit. Been doing a lot of cool shit in the last few days, right? Uh, and you know, you guys have probably seen this deck, right? So the problem is, is that you know, I wasn't always running Conchologist. I, halfway through, I realized Conchologist was just too good to not run. Like, like not even close to not, like not even close to a decision. I have to run Conchologist. I'm running Trinket Trade, which we've mostly only seen in like curious Shellfolk decks, right? Um, so, you know, I, I put in the Conchologist, right? I put in the Trinket Trade and then it's like suddenly, okay, you know, if, I, if I'm being honest with myself, wait, Trinket Trade, that's, that's not, Think it, traitor. Uh, if I'm being honest with myself, you know, uh, like Nair is obviously better than Riven. That's just, we're already in Bandle City, right? So like this deck doesn't actually even need Riven. It uses Riven, but you know, Riven kind of blows. Like we're mostly just paper crafting with Fizz. We can paper craft on a Nar anyway. So Nar is just better than Riven, right? Like that, that, that that's just like really, really simple to say. If, if, if we're trying to, you know, play out like a, con uh, of a consistent strategy in like early blockers, I honestly think Loping Telescope, again, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm probably running Loping Telescope here too, right? Like that's probably better than some of these high synergy cards. Like we just want value, right? And then suddenly like the deck just starts looking like this. Like at this point, it's like, okay, are we, are, are we in, are we in Yordle Captain? I don't know, maybe like, I'm not even joking, right? Like. It's, it's just kind of like the the way it literally consumes your deck, right? And if you if, if you build your own decks, you, you feel it. You, you feel the same thing that I'm describing. Like, that's, that's, what, that's what it does to decks. It just takes them over. And then eventually you just end up with like a Yordles and Arms deck, right? Exactly. But I think that's definitely a large part of the reason why like people like me and mogwai and top players and like all the content creators like 
I think that's a large reason why a lot of those kinds of people have a very consistent problem with Bandle City. But there's a lot of like the very casual community, like on Reddit, etc., that like sometimes don't like Bandle City, but often can't make up their mind. And it's just like when you're actually like building the decks yourself, there's you know, you you feel it a lot more. <laughs> I think that the riot balancing process is too data driven. Uh, I think that there's just a lot of you know data based decision making and not a lot of expertise based decision making, which is a cold take. This is probably the most common thing across the community of people that know how game development works to assume that it is, uh, for example. And like when, when I say like data, uh, it's really, really important to know that when a company like Riot looks at data and makes decisions based on data, they are looking at a lot of data. And like, so they're not just looking at win rate, right? Data is a very complicated thing and you can look at it in a lot of different ways, right? Riot, I, I don't know what their exact metrics are, right? They're not just looking at like, oh, this deck has a high win rate, let's nerf it. Which is why if you guys are wondering why like high win rate decks sometimes don't get nerfed, that's why. Low win rate decks sometimes do get nerfed, that's why, because they're looking at other metrics, right? They want, they want to maintain health in a lot of other ways, right? Like for example, I talked about this, but Iceborne Legacy, almost certainly got nerfed because they looked at the specific metric of the delta factor like the difference of win rate between when iceborne legacy decks drew iceborne legacy and when they didn't decided that the delta was too high and that the decks were too dependent on drawing this card felt that that was too polarizing and swingy such that you know they don't want that kind of strategy to have the win rate that it had and touched it up a little bit right like the, the idea is you know you're, you're looking at very sp you're there's a lot of different metrics like even for example one metric they might look at i hope they do by the way um is the literally the, like they can look at a metric of the amount of times the opponent has closed the game directly after queuing into x deck right like after a game with that deck like that could be a metric they're looking at that that would be a good metric to look at by the way literally just like the amount of games that uh the, the amount of clients that are closed after game x as the last game you know like the rage quit factor sure if riot's doing their job right they're looking at over a dozen major metrics to balance the game with and i don't think their their database analysis is necessarily incomplete or flawed i again i don't know the, the extent to what they're looking at um but Keep in mind, when they're looking at data, they're not just like literally looking at the Mobilytics meta stats, right? They are looking at more than that. I know that to be true. Um, but... <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry. I just saw something funny. Um, yeah, no. Um, I, I, I know they're looking at more than that. But I think there's still just a fundamental limit to data-based analysis. Like... Again, if you understand like what I'm breaking down is kind of the main problem of Vandal City, this is not something that's going to show up in data in that way, right? Like it's it's just not, uh, you know? And and I think that while Riot, I actually do trust. No, seriously, I do trust that Riot has a very thorough database analysis. I I actually I don't know this to be true, but I assume that they are looking at like a good variety of different statistics and weighing them properly I, I i expect they're being very thorough about that i just think there's a limit to like what that's going to do in design right so again game design is a very systemic issue right here i'm gonna i'm just gonna full screen myself here we go game design is a systemic like it, it, or sorry did i just say game design is a systemic issue uh game design is very complex and you need to you need to be able to evaluate systemic issues and diagnose them, right? It, 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 it's, it's honestly like not that dissimilar from just like any sort of systemic process. Like you, you can compare it to medicine where you need to like, you need to examine the symptoms and diagnose the exact issue. And that's not necessarily easy. There's a lot that goes into that and a lot that goes into like figuring out what could be the root cause of something that you're seeing, right? Because if you're spending all of your resources curing symptoms, well, it's a good short-term fix, but you're not really going to solve anything long-term, right? So, 
I would say a really big thing people focus on is balance, which I think is kind of it's very over focused. Um, my example off the top of my head involves this stick. All right. This is my stick. Uh, there are many others like it, but this one is mine. You can't have it. All right. This is a stick that I've actually had since I was uh, very young. This stick has stayed with me for God. I, I think I got the stick when I was like 15 years old, actually. So I, I've, I've had the stick about half my life. I'm yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually old. Um, this is this is my favorite stick. It's you know, I, I like to do this with it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm very partial to this stick. OK, um, <laughs> you're literally gnar. And I mean, if I want to, I can I can balance the stick too, right? Like balancing is it, it's it's something that just like takes a little bit of okay, I wasn't great, but like you know, you 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 can balance the stick decently well. Like I can probably like you know put this on my finger for like five seconds on average. You know that's fine. Um, <clears throat> what I would say is that a lot of people focus on whether a game is balanced and trying to solve the kind of very symptom level issue of the game being balanced by balancing the game. However, there's a lot of long-term design implications that will lend themselves to a game's state of fundamental balanceability. There are certain mechanics that are more balanceable than others. And that's a big problem that I think a lot of game communities overlook the difference between balanced and balanceability there's a lot of concepts that are harder to balance than others and therefore it's not a problem of balance if it's if you're working with a concept that's hard to balance it's it, it's at a certain point it becomes fundamentally unbalanceable and you need to start working with a concept that's easier to balance by changing the design of the concept right like doing more patches will do a lot I honestly can't say how much. Maybe maybe doing more patches would do a lot more than I think. Um, but I do think that there's at least a large part of the issue that does come down to the, the way the game is designed and the way it's designed to be... The way different strategies are designed to work together, right? It feels, it feels to me like the, the game has a lot of elements that make it harder to balance, you know? Like, for example, I also have this... This diet coke can on my desk this is a pretty unbalanceable thing i cannot put this on my finger for any amount of yeah no it doesn't balance right so like at the end of the day you have a system where you have two options you know you're trying to balance this coke can you either do you can say balance the game but that's kind of like saying just get really good at balancing this coke can or you can say you know maybe change the rules such that things are easier to balance right still not as unbalanced as league so this is just like the, the the fundamental of game design right i can i can tell you this is exactly how game design works you could you could absolutely argue against my specific points which i haven't made yet about rune terra being like harder to balance that's very arguable but like what i've said up until this point is just like very objective like how game design works um, there, there's, there's a lot of angles to it. There's a lot of, a lot of lenses. Yeah, uh, that, that's a good book, by the way. Game, game design, a, a book of lenses is a fantastic read. Um, th there, there's a lot of ways to look at it, but like what, what I've said so far is, is a very, very important way to look at it. Um, so I personally think that in Legends of Runeterra, because there's not a lot of diversion paths for deck building and a lot of low synergy things, you have a system where you are like most of deck building in legends of runeterra is kind of like finding the the best way to to pair different concepts right especially with bandle city i think that's what makes bandle city kind of hard to balance because bandle city basically is able is such a high value concept and so generically value oriented that it works with every region right and so this creates a system that is fundamentally harder to balance at a certain point harder to balance just becomes effectively unbalanceable and so like i i very much agree that the game needs more 
balance patches that is true i don't know exactly how much of the issue that is right like don't get me wrong just like in medicine you know if, if you understand like complex systems and the idea of you know a systemic issue versus a symptomatic issue you know you, you're, you're aware of the fact that curing symptoms is not great you know but at the same time you also you need you still need to do it it's symptoms are creating problems right like you've, you've got you've got some issue you know in a system and it's it's, it's creating a chain reaction right like you've, you've got an issue in your lungs that's that's creating an issue in your i'm just gonna name out random organs here it's, it's I, I don't have a good analogy when it comes to the human body actually but basically you know there can be symptoms of symptoms right like going and finding like the root cause of something is very very difficult it's just about like layers and causation right like if you have okay like you've got some kind of skin problem uh and that skin problem is caused by uh something in your uh in, 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 your, in your thyroid god i don't even know if that analogy makes sense because i don't know I, again i don't know how the human body works it wouldn't be a good analogy either way because i don't know i don't know that many of you guys are doctors either <laughs> uh but don't get me wrong you do need to solve symptoms you just need to do it while also trying to fix the underlying cause so yeah no balance would help it would be good but I think there are some deeper issues that might also be important. I think that um, the the general design of new cards that come out does not really lend themselves very much to you know being able to d do specific things with, and so you end up in a situation where th there's a lot of you you can basically run like when different regions feel too samey you end up in a situation where one of them is more directly comparable to the other which is why one of them just gets ran more than the other if that makes sense so that that's a better way to like i'm th this part is kind of like a little rambly i haven't really thought this one through as much in terms of like forming the thoughts in my head but like as regions are getting more samey and region identity is going down it feels like you have less of a reason to run the weaker region of the two, right? Like when things are more directly comparable. Region identity has been on a downward trend. Obviously, this is culminating with Battle City, which is of course devastating region identity. You guys know this. But like, even with like stuff like Shirima, it, it was already kind of like, I don't know, what the hell is Shirima's doing like three different things? It's not really like a core concept. There's a lot of situations where, like, you know. Oh, Shreema, in a certain kind of archetype, Shreema is a better version of Axe. Or in a certain kind of archetype, Shreema is a worse version of Axe, right? Like, as the options we have get more linearly uh, comparable, like they're trying to do similar things, the game becomes more like a Coke can. Like, fundamentally harder to balance. Because as two things start doing the same things, one of them will be a better version of the other one, right? And so, like, that's all I'm saying. Like, balance is important. But if 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 you're if you have a situation where two regions are are too close, or like the the top cards they offer you are too close, then you'll end up in a situation where one of them will just be better than the other one, and there's nothing you can do about that, right? Like Yordles and Arms is just going to be a better version of honestly like half the finishes in the game, <laughs> right? like that's the idea it's just like if it's doing the same thing you could say pack mentality i guess yeah if, if you want that's uh, that's not a perfect analogy because pack mentality is just has its own problems mind meld maybe yeah honestly mind meld sure yeah yordles and arms yeah that, that's a good analogy because mind melds is also trying to hit elusives it's also trying to like play for like a similar speed mind meld has been actually competitive in the past like a few different decks have splashed in mind meld it's not bad um but Yordles and Arms is just a better version of Mind Meld, right? That's that's kind of it. That's um that that's the problem. I'm just saying more balanced patch is good. I agree. It's a cold take. We would all like more than one balance patch every two months. 
but I don't know if that would fix the entire issue. That's all. That's all I'm saying. This is this is fun. I'm glad we we could just like have like talk for you know an hour about game design. I feel like we're gonna we're gonna do this like every patch cycle. I swear to God.